Hey guys, Doug here with Solar Wholesale. We're going to be doing a series of videos on how to put solar on your house. So, one of the first things we need to do with your solar array is actually map it out on the roof. So, to account for the fire setbacks from the ridge, which is three feet, and also the panel overhang that you're going to need, it's going to be about 52 inches. So, three feet from the ridge, and then another 16 inches down further from that. Um, and then once you find, once you have that just mapped out, you're just gonna mark it. And then we're gonna find, we'll work on finding the trusses in there. All right, now once you've found that approximate area of where you need to be from the roof, we're gonna find the truss. Um, just regular hammer, like you're pounding on a wall to find a stud, so. So you can, we've already marked this out, but you can hear it, it's pretty hollow there, pretty solid right there. So we know right there, we just wanna mark that with our crayon or chalk. Okay, so now that we found the approximate location of where the truss is gonna be, you're gonna use a quarter inch bit and drill down. We've already drilled down here, but you're gonna know pretty quick if you drill into something hard or if it kicks off to the side, you just pick it up and move over just a little bit. From there, this is gonna be the spot where we measure. Uh, most jurisdictions are gonna have you do every four feet for, for every row. Now, some places, you know, like the, where there's not a high snow load or anything like that, it's gonna be every six feet. All right, so now we're going to lay out the flashings on the roof. We use a uh, snap and rack for our racking. Uh, it's a super simple uh, racking setup, especially for first time DIY customers. So before we slide it underneath the shingles, we use M1 Chem Link, and this is the pattern that you wanna do, just this U shape around the hole right here. So if any water does get underneath, it, it is not touching the, the penetration. So then you're gonna slide that underneath here. You may have to Pry these up a little bit because of that adhesive, but you just find your hole, and then the next step will be putting in the lag. Okay, so you've got all your lags in the roof and all of your L foot in the saddles. So the nice thing about snap and rack is these clips right here. Everything snaps in. So you're just gonna put your rail in like this, and then just it already, it already clicked in. So the nice thing about this too is you don't want to cut any rail on the roof, but it does give you the ability to move it to where you need it. And then after you have all your panels laid on the roof, then you cut. All right. So this is snap and rack, so everything's a half inch bit. We are going to the lag's a half inch, and also the to connect and uh, tighten the saddles is also a half inch. One of the things you want to make sure though is that you are level and the L fit give you the ability to move it up and down a little bit so that your, your panels don't do any waves. So you lock it. Okay. Alright, now that we got the rail on the roof, we're ready to do some wire management and some microinverters. This is AP Systems QS1. We use QS1s of YC600. This one specifically has four modules per inverter, and then the YC600 has two modules per inverter. Okay, so now that we have the rail on the roof, next is time to place the inverters. We use the MLPE connections like this. Just place it in the rail and snap it. And then it's can easily freely move around. If you're worried about where to place the microinverters with our plan sets, we do a very detailed schematic of where you should place the micros for the best wire management. All right, so now we're going to move to wire management. All of the wires need to be off the roof. Obviously, the heat from the roof could cause problems in the future. And also, if there's an inspector doing the inspection on your roof, he's not going to allow that. So um, this right here is a trunk cable. This comes with the microinverters. It's pretty simple. You're just going to click this right in. All right, now that you have all your micros on the roof, let's go over a little bit of wire management. Um, one thing on our plan sets as well, we will tell you where the roof junction box is. This allows you to go into the attic, but um, it also is important where that's placed in regards to the trunk cable, because the trunk cable will run straight into that junction box. Um, what's awesome about Snap and Rack as well is the fact that they have these channels and it makes wire management that much more easy for you. So you can just place a trunk cable in there. All right, so we have the micros on the roof. What we wanna make sure is we get these serial numbers off of here. This is gonna create your site map. And then if you look really closely here, these are gonna have your channels, one, two, three, and four. Um, this is important for monitoring. So if you want to have panel module level monitoring, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you 
get these stickers so we can create a site map for you in case there's any problems with the system that we can immediately identify them. All right, so now we're gonna to have to get ready for the panels. Um, this is an end clamp here. It just slides right in. And it has this tail on there so that when you put the panel on, you can actually slide this onto the lip of the panel. And then there's a half inch connection right here that you screw down to screw the panel down. And we have the mid clamps. You just place it in there like that, pop it up, and you can freely move it around, but that's it. All right, well now that you have the panel placed, you just pull on this, it pulls over that lip right there, and you just tighten it down. All right, so this mid clamp will just come right over here like this. You're gonna wait, obviously, till you put in the next panel, but when you're tightening it down, it just needs to be kind of hand tight, 15 foot pounds, that's it. You don't wanna to go too tight or else you will pop the glass on the, on, the, on the panel. All right, now that we have the panel set, we're gonna click it into the micros and you gotta make sure that you hear that click. So that way you know it's an actual good connection. Also, if you place the micro somewhere and you can't actually reach the panel, it's okay. We send these whips called DC whips and they just extend from the panel to the micro. All right, now let's talk about some grounding. This is a ground lug. It looks a lot like the MLPEs, but it has a spot right here for the ground wire. Um, follow your plan set, but typically you're adding one of these per row and um, we're using number six copper wire on the roof. All right, so now we're gonna be doing our roof junction box. Each trunk line, depending on if it's a YC600 or a QS1, is gonna either have 12 modules or 14. So those are called strings. So each string is going to have either 12 or 14 modules on it. Those, that trunk line is going to be ran back here where you're going to be wire nutting it to our 12-2 Romex wire that's going to go through the attic. You are going to use a one and a half inch bit here to drill out this either one, either one of these holes right here. Okay guys, now we're done with the roof. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them. Um, we can go into greater detail on certain areas, but we just need to know what you guys need more help with. That same wire that's run into your roof junction box, you're going to be running through your attic. It's a Romex 12-2 wire. And we're going to be doing, we're going to be coming out the eave. And we're using that same one and a half inch bit right here. Okay, so that Romex wire is going to come out here into this outdoor rated junction box. And then you're going to be connecting that to 12 gauge THWN wire which we will supply. Um, then you're gonna be coming to your sub panel here. You can use EMT or a liquid uh, conduit. Uh, liquid's obviously easier to deal with. EMT is gonna be a little bit nicer. All right, so next, after the combiner box, we go to our AC disconnect. This makes it very easy to turn the system on and off with this blade right here. Still, same, left, black, right, red. And also your ground are connected. Um, we're using the same gauge wire here. This is actually 10 gauge because we've mapped this out like it's going to be a 40, 40 amp system total. So as you come over here to the, your main service panel, there, there's some panels are going to be different. The majority of what we see is this. Um, we're having, we right here, we have a 40 amp breaker because we know we have possibly two strings here of 20 amps. And so we just have a 40 amp breaker here but this is the best or the easiest way to install is when you have an actual breaker spot for yourself. Okay, last step, stickers. This is one, the one thing that inspectors will fail you for is not having the proper stickers. Uh, if you look in our plan sets, we do have them labeled so that you know where to place them. Um, some of them require placards and some of them are stickers, but as you can see, we have them placed all over here and also even in here labeling the, the solar breakers.